What's up everybody? Howdy, howdy, howdy. Well, we wanted to sit down and do a video today for you guys. We've been wanting to do this and keeping a list to do this video, but yeah. recently we just hit 100,000 miles on the new truck. I think last week, actually. Yeah, it was just last week. Yeah. If you're new to our channel or haven't been following us, previously we were in a Freightliner M2 112 business class. The new truck it is now a Freightliner Cascadia. We were in a M2, gosh, for about five years because we drove one for a fleet owner before we purchased our own and had that for... Three years. Almost three years, yeah. 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 So we wanted to kind of talk about some <clears throat> of the differences between the Cascadia and the M2 to um, some things that we like, you know, comparison, I guess. Yeah, comparable to the M2 that we used to drive. We used to think, oh, do we really need a Cascadia? <laughs> it's so much more expensive. The M2 does the job. It does. The, it did the job that we needed it to. Do we need all the extra bells and whistles? So we wanted to kind of share the bells and whistles that we've come to enjoy on the Freightliner Cascadia. Her more so than me. I'm, it's a work truck. I just wanted to, to make us money. She likes the more better features that the Cascadia has. I do. I absolutely love the Cascadia. Now, I, you know, our M2 was great. It, Like Jason said, it did the job. Yeah. But that's all we knew. We'd never driven a Cascadia. We no. didn't know the features. And of course, you know, you can get more options. I mean, not all of the Cascadias have all the same options. Right either right but we figured you know we've had this truck now since early february it's been about eight months we've hit a hundred thousand miles over a hundred thousand miles so we've got a good feel for for the things and yeah what we like so yeah. we figured we'd just share in case anybody's on the fence of maybe going the m2 route or the cascadia route if yeah. they're th if you're thinking about getting an expediter <laughs> truck i will say yes it is more expensive for the cascadia but it's really not that much more in the grand scheme of things no no it's uh, about twenty thousand dollars more yeah, so yeah. but over a time a three five year financing you know you're talking maybe 200 bucks extra a month mm -hmm. or something so yeah. not a big difference let's get into the things that we we like that are different with the cascadia versus the m2 first of all the cab is bigger than the m2 and in the m2 there was a hump that you had to go over to get from the cab to the sleeper. Well, the the foot level, it was dropped down. Mm -hmm. It was dropped down some. So the, with our custom sleeper built onto it, there was a hump right there that you had to go up the hump. It may be a nine inch difference. It's not drastic, but no. you had to kind of climb out of the <laughs> front seat yeah. to be able to get into the back of the sleeper where th this truck all you do is swivel around in it and stand up and you're yeah the floor of the cab is level with the floor of the sleeper yeah so there's yeah. there's it's no hump there that you have to go the over forward. there was a lip from the sleeper to the cab in the m2 that was probably i don't know three four inches yeah um, this no, it's flat. So I really yeah. like that. Another thing that we really like the headlights on the Cascadia oh are yeah. all LED. Yeah, and you can see like you have some a nice visibility mm -hmm. without the high beams on. Then you throw those high beams on, you can see quarter mile up the road. You oh, know, yeah, they're it's, great. Yeah, they are awesome. The fog lights on it. Um, we didn't have that in the M2, so the mm -hmm. fog lights are really nice. Well, we to did have. have fog lights, but they weren't LED. D. Remember, they were yeah, just those yeah. little squares, like kind of. It was like an aftermarket light. I yeah, think they yeah. weren't integrated into the, the bumper. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna kind of talk about the things we love and some things we don't love. But one of the things I will say with the headlights being LED, that is kind of a negative, is you can't just change a bulb right. if one goes out. You right. have to change the whole headlight. The whole headlight assembly. <laughs> now. What, and you those know, are expensive. They're very expensive. I mean, we have heard that they last a long time, yeah. so we shouldn't have to. But still, if one goes out, it's You're... not just a matter of, you know, going into the truck stop and buying a new bulb yeah. or even having just a spare bulb to change it out real quick. Yeah, you're talking, I think, upwards of twelve, thirteen hundred dollars too to have just one of them replaced. Yeah. But the great thing also about that is it's the Cascadia. It's mm -hmm. the number one selling truck in the country. There's tons of like places that keep 
these parts in stock, you know? Right. So being able to find a place, you, you'd probably be able to find one pretty easily and mm -hmm. get it fixed unless middle of the night or something. But even then, a lot of the freight liners are open 24 sometimes. Yeah, so. in the bigger cities. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one other thing some people may find a downfall of the LED headlights is that in snow, it's not going to melt that snow and ice off of the, the lens of the headlight. Yep. You're going to be out there cleaning, pulling over and cleaning them off uh, quite a bit probably. And mm -hmm. some, but we're going to be pulling over anyway if it's really bad. So true. Another thing that we like that kind of ties into <clears throat> the lights is on the Cascadia, it has a button up front that's called light test. And when you push that, it cycles through all of the lights on the truck, the headlights, the flashers, high the, beams. Yes. So basically you can push that button and go out while you're doing your pre-trip and the lights cycle through. Yeah. So you can check all of the lights as you're walking around. One of the big things I like about that is the brake lights. Mm -hmm. You know, you, that too? yeah, yeah, lights. yeah, you can, uh, it, does, it flashes the brake lights for you. So, you know, your brake lights are working before we, you know, it would take two of us. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times I would do it at night. Like I would push the pedal and I'd look in my side view mirror and I'd watch for it to get bright on both sides, not just one side, but that's not a guarantee. Uh, being able to have that and walk back there and just stand there and wait for that cycle to come on. And you know, your brakes are working or your brake lights are working. Yeah. So. It's pretty cool. I like yeah, that. that yeah, it's feature. a really, really cool feature. <laughs> I think my favorite part of the Cascadia are the, on the steering wheel, you got steering wheel controls. You got your money menu function buttons. You can control the volume of your stereo. You can control flashing your headlights for other drivers to uh, get over. You can flash your rear lights and say, thank you for flashing me to get over. You can control your cruise control all on the steering wheel. And and it, it just works seamlessly. Like it's super easy all on the right hand side. Then all your menu buttons are on the left hand side. That is a really nice feature to it's, have. I love it. Yeah, it's really nice. You can push cancel cruise, accelerate, decelerate. You can do all that from the steering wheel. I wish they had that feature in the M2 because that is a really cool feature to have. Keeping your hands on the steering wheel and being able to do all that. Yeah, because in the M2, in order to work the cruise, we had to do it on the dash. Yeah. You have to reach over and do it on the dash and the light flashing. You could flash your lights, but yeah. it was also on the dash. Yeah. So having that all right there and not having to take your hands off the wheel is yeah. awesome. Yeah. I really enjoy that. Yeah. Uh, another fe real cool feature I like is uh, the way the engine brake works. For one, the control for it is on your shifter Mm -hmm. column which is just right below your steering wheel on the m2 it was on the dash you had to set it on the dash but the way it works with the cascadia and how it works with cruise control is a really cool feature yeah so like you don't even have to turn your cruise on or your engine brake on for one if you're in cruise control and you start to go down a hill all you have to do is hold your decelerate button down for a second and it drops you down five miles an hour then the engine brake automatically kicks on mm -hmm. after you've reached five miles an hour over the your set speed limit so it just does it for you and what's the way it works for us is we just drop our speed down five miles an hour so we don't go over the speed limit mm -hmm. and then when we get to the bottom of the hill we just bump it back up the the five miles an hour back to our 63 that we're driving so. yeah it works great and it's seamless it it's, is. It's, it's it's awesome. Yeah, with the with the uh, M2, the engine brake, like you said, was on the dash. And with that engine brake, all we had was a high and a low. That's it. With this engine brake, there's actually three. There's like a low, medium, high. Yeah. If you're doing it manually with the with the uh, engine brake itself, yeah. but with the cruise set, oh my gosh, it's so so awesome. And when you set <laughs> your cruise, there's a limit where it's set five above or five under that. That, that set and yeah, yeah I mean you, it's just it we've, works so easily. We've heard drivers complain about the way, like, if you're coming up to a top of a hill and you got your cruise set, it will stop accelerating mm. right almost at the top, and you'll kind of slow down a little bit, but then you'll start going down the hill and you'll coast down and you'll speed back up. 
I can see how that would get annoying to some people. I think we've just gotten used to it. Yeah, I was going to say, when we first got into the truck, We're it like, was annoying because I was like, what is it doing? Why is it doing this? Yeah, it would yeah. go into E mode, which is, I guess, eco coast. mode or oh, coast mode. Yeah, it would coast. And I'm like, why is it slowing down before I'm even at the top of the hill? But yeah, now eight months later, we're totally used to it and it doesn't even bother us It doesn't anymore. bother us one bit, no. yeah. But Not I've heard all. drivers complain about it and I guess I could... I, it could get a, no, a little annoying for those who like to drive 70 all the time. And, yeah. Yeah, you know, but, but. It, I mean, it only does it for, I mean, I don't think it's ever dropped me when it goes into that coast mode. It's never gone under five miles from what I have the cruise set no, to. And then no. it just picks right back up. So, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's not an issue. It always does it right at the top of the hill. Mm -hmm. So Well, it has some kind of <clears throat> where it kind of knows the terrain, right? Doesn't it? And I it, think so. I, I think I've read something about that. Like they've yeah. kind of narrowed down the terrain and they know when you're, the, like the transmission knows when you're getting ready to go coasting down a big hill. I don't mm -hmm. know if that's a feature on all of them, but I have read that. Which is a great segue into the next thing we like is the dt12 transmission yeah that thing is awesome <laughs> so in it, our in our m2 we had the eaton ultra shift ultra shift 10 Trans speed yes and now we have the dt12 which, which is a detroit transmission 12 speed. 12 speed right they kind of work similar because they are an automated yeah, transmission they're so still you, shifting it's still shifting and you still can manually shift yeah but oh my gosh it's so much smoother smoothness on this it's, transmission it's a lot smoother and it skips gears Yes. So the transmission knows if you need that next gear or not. And a lot of times it will skip like two or three gears because it knows you're not going to need that. With the Ultra Shift, it went through every, every single gear. gear. Every and single gear. It was such a rough takeoff with that transmission. Yeah. The DT12, oh my gosh, it's just so much. Now that's, that's to say there aren't some rough times. But, but it's not perfect. It's not perfect, but, but it's it better. is like 100% better than that one we had in the in the um, M2. Yeah, it's definitely better than that, that M2. Yeah. Now, as far as the engine with the Cascadia versus the M2 that we had, it is still the same engine. It's a DD13. Just a newer model. Newer New, model, They've yeah. made some adjustments to it, mm -hmm. but uh, it's basically the same engine we had in the M2. Yeah, and some people may ask, well, why don't you get the DD15? Well... The reason is, is because with the DD15, it makes it a longer hood. It's a yep. longer, it's a, bigger en engine. a bigger engine. Of course, we have to stay under 40 foot with a straight truck. So if we did that, we would have to make either the sleeper smaller or the box smaller to stay yep. within that 40 feet. Yep. So that's why most of the time in these Expediter trucks with the freight of the Cascadia is they do a DD13. And for our weight, you don't need a DD15. No. That is way too much engine dd13 honestly is way too much engine for this truck yeah. <laughs> so going to a dd15 just makes absolutely no sense at all right yeah yeah so yeah same engine we had before just like I said a newer model another thing i really like the cascadia versus the m2 is we're getting the same miles per gallon with this truck as we did the last truck mm -hmm. now i it's funny because we have an extra axle with four more tires on the ground. So you would think we wouldn't be getting as good a fuel mileage, but I believe a lot of the aerodynamicness of the Cascadia mm -hmm. plays a big part. The rear end gear ratio is much lower yes, or higher. It's it lower. Lower. It's, it's a 279 gear yeah. ratio, whereas in the M2, it was a 321. Yeah. So having that lower numbered gear ratio um, allows it to, it, it just requires less power to push down the mm -hmm. truck. I don't understand the full understanding of it. I know it's just <laughs> the way that it's geared. Definitely helps it drive, get better fuel mileage. So mm -hmm. we're getting... I mean, we're, it's about the exact same yeah. that we were in the M2. Yeah, we're averaging anywhere from 11 to 12 miles a gallon Yeah. Um, in this truck. And, you know, granted, yes, majority of the time we do drive 63, which helps with that. Yeah. But gosh, yeah, I mean, even when we have to bump it up because we're trying to get to our delivery or something quicker, and we bump it up, we're still getting nines, nine, 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 and, nine a and, half. and a half. So, yeah, yeah. yeah, not bad at all. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's pretty good. Impressive for all the extra tires and axles yeah. we have on the 
and that's pretty accurate now that we have <laughs> had it and it's over a hundred thousand miles you know, yeah it's over that break-in period yep. and yep. so that's a pretty accurate fuel mileage that we yep. should see consistently unless there's an issue our highest fuel fill up i think we've seen like 12.89 mm -hmm. so almost 13 miles a gallon which yeah. it but that's downhill tailwind <laughs> you know yeah. driving 62 yeah. but you know, it's pretty just, impressive that this truck is getting like that, like kind, said, of fuel that kind of fuel mileage yeah. compared to the m2 which is a smaller truck we only had one axle not two yeah. and yeah and honestly we haven't seen weight play a big difference so whether we're carrying 10,000 pounds or we're carrying 100 pounds we haven't seen a huge difference in between yeah. those weights. So no, making the fuel mileage yeah. go down. Or, yeah. No. Yeah. Another thing that we really like about the Cascadia versus our M2s is the seats. They are so much more comfortable yeah. than those M2 seats. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It's yeah. like night and day difference. Yeah. There's so much more adjustment as far as the back, like the M2 seats. I never felt, I always felt like I was leaning back and that was on the, the, we had it pushed all the all way the forward way up with the the, yeah. back, the seat back and yeah. with this you it you can sit up more straight there's a lot more adjustment on it i like how the armrests adjust with you don't the, have that yeah the m2 twisty. it had like a twisty dial that you could never get to work right it always mess up yeah there's so much more um seat controls for like for the, the cushion actual, part that your butt's on yes, yeah yeah yes. And the biggest thing I love is the heated and air conditioned seats. That, yeah. Oh my gosh, you just push a button. It's got a high, medium, low setting on either heat or AC and oh, it works great. I think the heat works a little bit better than the AC does, Yeah. but it's still, it's gosh, it's amazing. Air conditioner, it, it works okay. Like it doesn't cool off your whole leg and whole mm. butt area, mostly more of your back area it gets. Yeah. Um, but that is also a downfall to the seats too. Yeah. Because Freightliner only offers two options. You can either get seats that swivel in, inward or towards the sleeper, mm -hmm. or you can get heated and air conditioning. You can't have both. Yeah, which I don't understand why. Yeah, I don't. I, I'm sure the mechanisms in there that probably. cool probably wouldn't swivel very well. Mm -hmm. Something, but you can only have one or the other. So you have to make your choice. Do you want seats that swivel? Or do you want to be able to have a warm butt? Yeah. <laughs> I enjoy the heated and air conditioned. I, I mean, I don't think we need the swivel seat. If Jason's back in the sleeper and I'm up there, I just turn and swivel my body to talk yeah. to him. I don't need to swivel plus, the whole seat. Plus, we keep a lot of tools back behind the seat yeah. that uh, would probably get in the way of the swivel. That's true. So we would have yeah. to move that stuff all the time. So yeah. being that the floor is completely level, just swiveling around and you're on your butt and coming into the back is easy enough. Yeah. And obviously in the M2, <laughs> you know, you can upgrade the seats. You can. That's, that is. You can. But we did find that the, to upgrade those seats, the way that hump is or the way the floor is, you have to have a special bracket. You're very for limited. The seats. You're very limited on what you can get because of it's not just a flat floor. Yeah. But just the stock seats that are kind of a little upgraded from the M2 to the stock seats that come in the Cascadia versus the heat in an air. They're awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love the new seats. I like the leather too. Mm -hmm. They do still have like the lumbar support. The M2 had that too, but I think it's a little better in these. Yeah. Um, these are, you know, a leather seat versus the M2 were a fabric seat that we had, which again, that can all be upgraded for a price in your M2. Yeah. And we actually were going to upgrade the seats before we decided to get another truck so yeah, yeah that was one thing we were gonna do we, but we these just seats held are, off on it yeah are awesome speaking kind of of the seats i like that the seat belts in the cascadia they are the orange color yeah versus in the m2 they were yeah. black again that is something that you can you do have the option to pick that i think yeah. but yeah i really like that as well having this it definitely alleviates any mistake that you did not have your seatbelt on <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah I, I got my list we've been keep we've been compiling this list for the last few months because we yeah. knew we wanted to do this video yeah the one thing also that we like about the cascadia versus the m2 is we do have three cup holders up front yes. 
versus the M2, we only had two. Yeah. I just like the whole dash layout of the Cascadia. Just everything is so easy to reach and in reach. And not that it wasn't in the M2, it was just, it's just a little different. A little different. Yeah. yeah. Like the, there was two cup holders up front, but one was all the way over on the passenger side and you only had one on the driver's side. This has all three mm -hmm. that are pretty much right in, by the driver, yeah. but then the passenger can reach the third one that's all the way on the end. And so, mm -hmm. and like, I like to have uh, like a bang energy drink and then a bottle of water and Heather will have her coffee and then a bottle of water. Yeah. So yeah, having nice. the, the ability to have two different drinks, you know, mm -hmm. is pretty awesome. Yeah. Another thing that I really <laughs> love about the Cascadia versus our M2 is how much higher up it sits. Yeah. It sits a lot higher than that M2. So you can, your field of vision is just so much better in it. Well, you got to think too, the M2 is not a uh, over the road truck. Yeah. It's a city truck. Yeah. So they've made it lower for a bunch of reasons, but have, this is an over the road truck, mm -hmm. you know? And we even have uh, the lower profile tires on here. So imagine if we had the regular tires, it didn't even hit. It would even sit up a it little bit higher little than it is higher. now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but I love, you know, just the the being of the big windshield. It's it's amazing. I, I love it so much. A lot better than the M2. Yeah. One other thing uh, with the Cascadia versus our M2, we have a lot more storage up front. There's two large glove boxes on top of either side of the cab. We've got two large cubbies in the middle. Yeah. There's just all kinds of more storage up there than what we had in, in our the M2. doors we the, got we keep our fueling gloves there which and, yeah this automatically comes with the door cubbies in our yeah. m2 it didn't automatically come with that we actually yeah. had to buy one to put on the driver's side door and yeah. add that in yeah. which it's probably something if you're ordering an m2 you could ask for that i guess but it automatically came with this yeah and the the um, controls on the lock and op yeah, the opening yeah, controls the power locks. on the doors. Yeah. Now in our M2, we did have a window control on the was it the window or just a lock? On the it was just a. Ooh, I don't remember. I know we had them add it to or when we did our it M2, it was yeah. But a lot of the older M2s, there's no controls for the passenger side. It's like all in the middle all dash. All on the dash, yeah. On the Cascade, it's each door has its own for locking and the windows. Right. Yeah, that's a really cool feature. Mm -hmm. um, another thing I like, and this just goes to the Detroit engines, is I know we did some videos. We had some trouble with the trucks in the beginning. But overall, the reliability that we've had out of this thing... We've never had to do a regen in the truck, but of course we don't idle the thing either. Right. We've never had to do a parked regen. We've had the two little issues, one with the air tank and then one wiring issue, I think, where yeah. it was telling, it wouldn't tell us about the fuel. Uh, oh yeah, the fuel gauge. Fuel gauge. Sensor. So, but other than that, you know, those are minor things. Those are to be expected. Yeah, yeah the reliability of the Detroits, from my experience, and we have, gosh, 700,000 miles experience with Detroit's. They're not perfect. I know I hear about people having problems all the time, but compared to other engines on the market, the Detroit has been the most reliable that I've seen. So that's why we've stuck with the Detroit engine. I, I don't trust Cummins. They just have I've read way more horror <laughs> stories about Cummins than I have Detroit's. I've read the horror stories about them all but way more about coming. So I love the reliability. I love this Cascadia. I'm not a big fan of Freightliner, but honestly, Kenworth and Peterbilt's haven't been building the best trucks in future times either. So I think they're pretty comparable to everybody else. We've never driven a Volvo, but I've heard they're really nice to drive. Yeah, we have, but expensive to work on. Yeah. Another thing that's really nice about the Cascadia versus the M2, it does come with a better stereo system yeah. than the M2, better speakers, better speakers. And all around. Yeah, the yeah. M2, we ended up changing out the speakers and that because they and, were and crap. Those, even what we changed them out to were crap. Yeah, there's they're just little, not much option. They're just little tweeters and yeah. all you have were two of them. Whereas in the Cascadia, we have two speakers on the door, two up on the dash. I mean, it's just way better. 
Uh, the M2 had serious satellite that you could connect to it too. I think but most do, yeah. Yeah, I think that's too. a pretty standard thing going on just because Sirius is keeping their <laughs> business going. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, that's something they do. Yeah, but much better sound system in this <clears throat> one than yeah. versus the M2 was. And again, that's probably something you could upgrade in the M2 as well. Yeah. But it just comes already standard in the Cascadia, which is really nice. Yeah. Also, with the Cascadia versus the M2, this one actually has a cab curtain that's on a rail that you can open and close our yeah. m2 didn't have that now we could have put one in could have yeah yeah it's something you could have put in but yeah it, it was nice to have it in this mm -hmm. one but I, I will say one of the kind of negative things about that is we really don't use the cab curtain we still have just the one that we hook up on the front yeah because the cab curtain in this truck and I could just be I think this was from AA what it, AA put in yeah but it's it's vinyl and it's just so stiff it's very stiff. and the the rollers that go on the actual railing they come off a lot they do we could upgrade to that yeah. we just haven't done it just and we've stuck with the yeah. Hang, hanging the one up in the windshield yeah yeah another thing I really like about the Cascadia is the digital information that you get on the dash when you're scrolling through the menu system there's so much uh features in there that you can change some come with uh other features it's how you have it spec and what you have put in there but i mean it's just to have that digital readout we can have a digital speedometer we can see what our def uh, soot levels at or the dpf soot level you can adjust how the your side lights turn on when you close the door if they shut off automatically or if they stay on for 30 seconds 20 seconds the digital display though i mean what we normally keep it on is the home and it gives you like everything you got your time there you got your miles per gallon you got your your uh god just i can't even remember All kinds everything of stuff, yeah. yeah you can actually change like the serious radio channels through the like they're integrated into the freightliner mm -hmm. system through the dash so you can like change channels in through it, it it's just really nice and oh, it's yeah. this the display like the color of it the the layout i think is just perfect yeah it's awesome i think Freightliner nailed it out of the park with that one. <laughs> and you mentioned something too that is something that we have now in the Cascadia that we didn't have in the M2, and that is the porch lights. So on either side of the cab, when you open the door, it has an LED light that comes on, which is yeah. really nice at nighttime. Yeah. You know, when we're getting out, letting the dogs out, or getting out to do a safety check, to have those lights on either side when you open the door at night. Yeah. I really like that. Yeah. And you can adjust the timing for how long they stay on and yeah, all through that yeah, menu yeah, so yeah. yeah that's another great feature that i do love about the cascadia yeah one thing i've been really impressed with on the cascadia is the turning radius how far you can crank it and we have a really long wheelbase too yeah. so typically the longer the wheelbase is the not as tight of a turn you can make in it but with even with this long wheelbase we can we actually have better turning radius in this than we did the m2 yeah i think the m2 actually had a longer wheelbase so because it only had a single single axle, single axle yeah. on the rear but i mean you could turn on a dime on, in this thing and it's u-turns in the middle of a parking lot you know it's really awesome mm -hmm. i could only imagine what the cascadia is with shorter <laughs> wheelbases and regular yeah. sleepers yeah. i'm yeah. sure those guys are just zipping in and out of turns and yeah easy one another thing that i like about the cascadia over the m2 is that the the cascadia has what's called a creeper mode yeah. So, you know, it's like, say you're in traffic and you're kind of saying back, you don't have to push the gas or the brake. You just let it go. And it kind of just does a creeper kind creep of mode coasting. to slow, you know, slow, a slow creep. And, and it does it in reverse. In reverse. Too, when I was you're backing say. up to yes. a dock. Yeah. Man, in that M2, I can't tell you the number of times when we were backing into docks, slamming into the dock. Boom. Just, and, and a lot of that, I think, Everybody's do, all looking. What, what, <laughs> what exploded? <laughs> I think that mode all has to do with the transmission it in does. this truck. Yeah, it's yeah. a different transmission. Yeah. But, man, it makes it so much nicer. Yeah, backing up to docks. Yeah, and, yeah. And, yeah, being in traffic. That M2 
when we were in traffic, it was like, you know, yeah. And you'd be rocking back and forth oh, back yeah. here in bed, and it was horrible. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'd wake up so many times and <laughs> uh, griping. I know. <laughs> Those are the majority of the things that we could kind of think of just to kind of let you know the differences and what we really are enjoying with the Cascadia versus what, what we had with the M2. Yeah. There's not really a lot of negatives. I know we talked about a couple. There is one more negative we wanted to talk about with the windshield. Yeah. <laughs> windshield fluid or even or if it's rain raining. or anything. So like the way it's designed is if you're using your windshield washer fluid and cleaning off your windshield, when you're driving down the road, all of that fluid spreads to the side and then just comes in spirals on your side windows. Yeah. It makes your side windows so dirty. Like you, we're constantly having to clean those side windows. You actually have to roll the windows up because if you don't, it, it, like it, we like to keep our windows cracked for air. Yeah. For air, if you don't roll them up, that windshield washer fluid is going to spiral <laughs> on the windshield and come up and hit you in your face. Even yeah. rain, or when, rain, if yeah. it's raining out, that water is just going around the windshield, up on your sides, and then coming in through the cracks that you have open, and it's just constantly battering your face <laughs> with rain it's yeah. so annoying it's annoying and i know i know a lot of people i'll just roll the window up <laughs> i like fresh air yeah. i have to have fresh air yeah and again that's not a big negative it's, it's just something different from what we were M2, used right, to right. we've even thought about getting the little rain guards to see if that might help we yeah. just hadn't done it yet yeah um, maybe if somebody else has a suggestion on that that's in a cascadia let us know but yeah. i mean that's really it i mean i can't think of anything other than the few things we've mentioned negative about the cascadia no. versus what we had before i mean no. i absolutely love it i still miss the m2 jason misses the m2 i don't miss it at all i love the cascadia it was, over that M2. It was a simple truck it worked it made us money I, it did, it I did. May, I but this it. one does too so yeah <laughs> and we got a little bit more bells and whistles and more bit, comforts. Little, well, we could do all that in an M2, though. Yeah. You could buy just, an M2 with a 120-inch sleeper on it. You can. Yeah, you absolutely. Can. You can. And save I've, that $20,000 and add that <laughs> extra $20,000 towards a bigger sleeper. Could even go 132. Yeah. 144. You could do all that. You yeah. Can. I mean, the M2 had some great features, too. It did. It's just, this is just kind of an upgrade for us. So, yeah, wanted yeah. to share our thoughts between the two since we've had both now. I know a lot of you guys have tons of experience driving almost everything there is oh, out yeah. there. Oh, yeah. uh, this is just our experience with the Cascadia. Yeah, so. yeah, but we overall we love it. And yeah. yeah. That's all I got. <laughs> That's all we got, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video of us sharing some of the things that yeah that we're loving about the Cascadia. Hundred thousand mile review. Um, definitely worth it next thing we got to do now we got to get an overhead done on it we do have to That's get an overhead thing we got to yep. do yeah they recommend yep. that at right around a hundred thousand miles so yep. that'll be our next thing we got to get done yep that's coming out of your check <laughs> it's coming out of your check <laughs> <laughs> all right guys thank you as always for watching and subscribing until our next video peace love and expediting